Good evening, everyone, and bangarang to all fellow Lost Boys, mermaids, and pirates who are watching this evening. My name is Tammy Tucky. I'm host and co-producer of the Hook Fan Podcast, alongside my co-producer, Thomas Robert, who is in the live chat. For those of you who are watching live, hello! Welcome to the fun! So glad that you're here. We're back to continuing our celebration of the new album released by La La Land Records. Hook, and let's see if I can make sure you could see it. <laughs> there it is. Sorry with the glare. But Hook, the ultimate edition expanded and remastered. So we already had talked with Mike, uh, I think about two two weeks ago now. And we're going to bring some more fun stories to you and more clips and more things to hear and see this evening. Um, if you'd like to get your own copy of the album or find out more about the album, um, to your right is where the live chat is happening. At the very top is a pinned comment and that has the link. And it's also for those who are not watching live, it's in the show notes below. So uh, there's a moment in Hook where Peter Banning, played by Robin Williams, finds himself now in Neverland, but more specifically, the town of the pirates. So this leads to Mr. Smee's entrance, which includes the appearance of some of our special guests this evening. So let's take a look at that clip from the film. So that's a little clip from the film Hook, and let's welcome the pirate ladies. We're going to call them that this evening. Uh, we have Randy, Mary, and Kim. Hey, ladies. Hello. <laughs> Sounds nice. <laughs> How are you guys? Welcome. Happy reunion. It's good to see you all. Good to be here. Sorry. You look great. I can't get this hair oh, out of my eyes. I'm like... Randy, so <laughs> lovely to see you all. It's great to see all of you. It's been a it's been a day or thirty years. <laughs> do, do you do Give you remember take. hearing? Do you remember hearing about the? Was there an open call for this? Was this like because I, I remember reading all about how it was like the biggest talk of the town. This film. So oh, what did you hear about it specifically? Okay, I don't think it was an open call, actually. I'm not sure. Maybe it was. No, I, I, yeah, I don't think it was Vincent, either. I think Vincent Patterson, who's, you know, um, who choreographed a whole piece for us, had a, may possibly had an open call and brought a bunch of people in because we auditioned with, with a lot of people, didn't we, at Debbie Reynolds, right? God, who I don't it? even, I don't remember. I know how I got to, I know how I got to Vince. I got to Vince from another choreographer who I was taking class with. I know you know, knew Vince for a long time, yeah. Mary knew Vince, but I did not know Vince before the audition, but a choreographer that was sort of my mentor and I d danced a lot with pulled me aside after class and said, a friend of mine is looking for these pirate wenches that have to be, be triple threats. Go, go see him. And he got me a lot of work and I said, okay, I'll go see anybody you say to go see. That's how it went. But I don't remember the, was there an actual audition? Was there, Mary? Mary, Mary unmute, you have to un unmute yourself. Un unmute yourself, Mary. I want to talk to you. <laughs> I the hair out of my eyes, my too. How do I do this? Call to come and meet Vincent. I believe we met at the Page Museum at the park there. And before I met Vincent, I had a little bird poop on me. <laughs> That's good luck. And in my family, yes, that's good luck. So I just got goosebumps on my knees. So I was like, I got this gig. I have this gig. So wow. anyway, so that's how I met Vincent. I had not danced for him. I had not sung anything for him. I, I, it was just, so that was, it, Hollywood's funny. It is. And it used to be, we're all old enough that I can say it used to be. It used to be, and it is still in the dance world. It's, just, it's like, you know, building a reputation and having someone say, like, 
my Joey, Joey Sheck is the one who mentored me and said to go see Vince. He knew Vince really well. So, I mean, they are, you know, if they, if you come recommended by somebody that takes the fear out of the person who's hiring you. Yes. So, and I, my first dance teacher was Joey Sheck. Oh, there you and go. then it was Vincent Patterson. And so we became very good friends, Vincent and I. And so he called me for this. I had done commercials for him. I had done work with Vince. And um, I mean, he knew my work. And we used to write, we called it Catholic rock. We wrote songs together for a while. And uh, yeah, that was thanks. just so crazy. But I loved his class. And um, that, so that's how I got pulled so Vince will have to tell you if it was an open call. <laughs> I don't think I, I actually don't think it was. I think he put out the feelers to people. And Mary, Mary, weren't you on Broadway by that point? I mean, Mary's a powerhouse singer. You afterwards. No, I, I know you went out, I know you were afterwards. I see I've stalked you. I had gone back and <laughs> I've gone back and forth. I, I, LA is my hometown, but I, I really wanted to do theater. And people in LA were like I wish you could leave town so I can get a job. And I'm, and then when I went to New York, it's like, well, she's here in New York because she can't get a job in LA. And I'm like, I just want to do theater. So yeah. I, I, I had done a Broadway show in 1988, and then I came back home to LA. And then I went back to New York for Jelly's Last Jam and, and stayed mm -hmm. for about 18 years. Wow. Yeah. So, so before you got on set, were you doing dance rehearsals and you were also doing costume fittings at the time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right before? oh yeah. Extensive. Extensive. We, yes. we, Vincent choreographed us at, I think it was Debbie Reynolds. Yeah. And uh, so we worked over and over and over. I mean, extensive. Yes, Randy, that's a good word for it. Because I'll never forget, I had been in, I mean, now it takes me longer. I'm still dancing. I went to dance class last night. I hurt. But I remember his choreography, which nobody got to see because that part was cut out. But I never, I'll never forget it because it was so, it wasn't hard in terms of dancer speak. There was no turns or kicks or that kind of stuff. But it was one hand talking to the, do you guys remember? It was one hand talking to the other and then the other one stopped it. And I remember going, I cannot figure this out. I was like, so because it was intricate that way. You don't remember? Is it bringing back memories, Kim? No. You don't remember that? Oh, I do. We'll ask Vince. When he, we'll have to ask Tammy. Put a yeah. pin in that. We'll ask. We'll ask Vince because I had never done anything like that. And then later on, I looked at Vince's throughout his choreography. He does stuff like that. It's kind of a signature thing. Yeah, I do. Do you remember, remember that, Mary? You know, I a little bit because I had done Ain't Misbehaving before and a lot of the choreography is Thai and people don't realize that. So when Vince started going in that direction, I was like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I hear where you're going with that. I, I like hand, handography. Handography, right. I mean, I remember just... <laughs> Going over it and over it and over it. I yeah. remember, you know, and he's he's methodical, and it was so fun. And we had great music, and we were singing. Yeah. And you know, and he was preparing us to be for Stephen to say yes, come, you know. And um, Vince, I think, was the one that hired, actually. And then, of course, Stephen hired us ultimately but he pulled us together to yeah do this. definitely yeah so was I, there a group audition for steven so he could visually see if no. you guys were all going to work together or was there a one-on-one no, we thing we were put on tape I actually rem I don't, what, it's so funny you can't ask me what happened today i couldn't remember my, my mother's address and i'm there every day of the week almost but i remember this very well he made us do a poem on tape I'll never forget mm. it because it was a childhood. I did um, the owl and the pussycat and he said, do it in some sort of accent or do it. So make it different. And we did a poem. We did a poem on tape and I will die on my grave remembering that. And then I <laughs> Stephen picked from tape. Interesting. So, so yeah. he picked from tape from what Vincent sent him. Yeah. From what or... Vincent called. 
for what okay gotcha so yes. so tell me about the costumes because uh thomas found some here here's one of them i think this is yours kim some footage of of the what the costume Aww. looks like now Aww. isn't that beautiful i love those oh boy it was spectacular like the quality you know, it, 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 I feel like this yeah. is one of those golden age Hollywood films, even though it's like 90s, right? But oh, so much money was put into the costumes and sets and, and the talent, right? So w when you were remembering kind of like putting these outfits on, were you a part of the process of creating the outfits and what, yeah. what, what color looked best? Okay, so we got hired for three weeks. We were hired for three weeks. Stephen loved the way we looked so much and i mean we really got hired for that that scene to do a whole singing and dancing number and then he loved what we like looked so much he put us in a boat he put us do you remember all the different things that stephen had us do i just remember i remember coming down the pike that the production value was so great on the hookers they would like you would hear Unleash the hookers, which meant undo our corsets because we were in them all day. And I also, going back to the costumes, I always. Been, do you remember that? I mean, we made Mary oh, laugh. Um, but I remember going back to the costumes. There were times I just couldn't get enough oxygen. Yeah. Oh, was you would hear it over the, the walkies. Can we, you'd hear 1AD go, can we unleash the hookers? And then you'd hear, unleash the hookers, they have time. So, because we were tied oh in. Oh my God. We were really tied in. That was not. That was not CGI. We were tied into those things. So, but going back to the costumes, because I loved the costume designer and I talked to him a lot, there was imported silks from Italy that they distressed. Wow. Now that's yeah. quality. I got to say, those costumes, Anthony Powell is a genius. The costumes yeah. were gorgeous. Yeah. They were gorgeous. I will admit, there were parts of my skin where there was no black on me anymore. Okay, <laughs> and I will also say that, that my costume had to be a minimum of 50 pounds. Yeah. And oh, so I was heavy. at my heaviest shot that. I was 270 pounds when I shot that. Whoa. So I am probably about 80 pounds lighter right now. Yay. So, whole other life. Yeah, let's go. I just asked if we had any input. Every job I do, I asked. I asked to be a redhead, and he said, "Yeah." I yes. did. I had black. I, now I'm a redhead because I pay for it. But so I just said, "Can I have a red wig?" And he said, "Yeah." Oh, it <laughs> looks it's great. My I and I will say, my hair, how it's all boofed out like that. Yeah, is Afro -pups. because they're. There's chicken wire in there. <laughs> My shoulders had scratches on them. Okay. Oh, no. And I don't know if you guys remember the tattoos. Because oh, I, I do. Had to remember not to wash my tattoo. And yes. so they didn't have to keep reapplying it. I yes. mean, it was a trip having tattoos in Pirate Town, let me say. You can, it was. I have stories about this, but we have to keep it clean. But, um, <laughs> well, I do have you a, know, if well, you want to. <laughs> Dustin, once you, if you look at that picture, you can see my strawberries, so to speak. Uh, there's strawberries on my boob right there. And one day, just Dustin was standing next to me and just leaned over and licked the strawberry. I was like, oh. Yeah, it was. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. He also, he also invited me to have a drink in his trailer. And I always kick myself, going, would that have made my career? Should I have done that? But I didn't know if it was a party. And we were up at the crack of dawn. At the crack of dawn. I couldn't care less. That was the funny thing. I just wanted to go home and go to bed. We were in hair and makeup at the crack of dawn, and my wig, talking about wigs, was so heavy. That blonde mm. wig was heavy. Yeah, it was It was quite something. Kim, did they bead your eyelashes? 
you know, dip the paraffin and bead each eyelash on you? Because they did that to me and I still have missing eyelashes. It's an old oh. turn of the century way oh. before they had mascara. They have hot black paraffin. They yeah. dip it in the hot black paraffin and then put, okay, I see Mary nodding. So they did it to Mary too. Well, then they done it to me. I, yeah, and, and one of the things that I really loved about the uh, beading, well, just the makeup, we had, we had, Mr. Westmore. Yeah, we did. Makeup, you yeah. know? I mean, it and, was. And, and that's, I had never heard of beating before. And it was, there was, it was just, it was wonderful. Yeah. It yeah, was wonderful. Was in every department, it was uh, quite stunning. And like I said, so we ended up 13 weeks as opposed to three weeks. And, um, Wow. He kept just saying, well, what, well, let's try them here. Uh, do you remember getting in the boat? You guys were in the boat? Uh, they, that never got. We, he had us in all these different scenarios because he loved the color. You know? so, were, you, were you shocked at how much was cut of you? Because when I'm going back and watching the film before our interview, I'm like, where are it? Like my girls, where am I? Like the mermaids and no. like, the girls are gone. It's just all about Tinkerbell. And that's one thing I, I probably like, I love this film, but that's one thing I'm like, hmm, you know? <laughs> well, you know, I, what I know is that the momentum. So Dustin Hoffman's not seen until Bob Hoskins, who was such a beautiful. Oh, he so was sweet. beautiful to work with. Yes, he was. Right? He was amazing. Such and a sweetie. Right, just like, he entertained everyone. He was just so kind and so fun all the time. Uh, his facility, right? It just moved through him. Anyway, um, what was I saying about, well, there you have it. Well, I'll add on to what you were saying, Kim, and it'll come back and then you'll butt in. Okay. But do you guys remember how production would stop? Because we had Liza Minnelli come through and there was a guest book that came out. And Robin would entertain every, so Liza, yeah, the guest book would be, it was insane. You can't imagine there was three sound stages of Pirate Town built to one eighth scale or something. And so production would completely stop. Michael Jackson came through, Liza Minella came through. I don't even remember, but production would stop. They'd get out the guest book. That's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see that guest book. And yeah. Robin well, would entertain, remember. Robin would turn on. Yeah. And everyone wanted to be in the book. So Glenn Close actually was a pirate and is in the film. Right. Um, yeah. Quincy but Jones. I was gonna, oh, sorry. What I was going to say is Bob. Oh, I was just going to say that. Yeah. I, I was just saying that Quincy Jones was a pirate. David yes. Crosby was a pirate. Glenn Close was a pirate. We had Dan Haggerty come into the set because he thought he looked like a pirate and they didn't hire him. There was like all kinds of magic. You know, remember when they were hiring the pirate clubs so they didn't have to do hair and makeup, you know, for the extras or they they get biker clubs because they had hair and beards and stuff. So they didn't have to do the hair and makeup. And Hundreds I mean, of extras. It was, uh, yeah. yeah, it was pretty funny. So, but So what I'm saying about the hook, now I know. <laughs> so Bob was to get that hook and then our whole pirate are singing and dancing and then the pirates did singing and dancing too it steven ended up feeling like we didn't get to we haven't seen hook yet and so it stopped the momentum so that's why it, the end of all of our um singing and dancing was hook 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 and so in the dailies after watching they just he just went we got to get there. Or Dustin said, you haven't gotten to me yet. I don't know that. But do you remember after the dailies? Of, I'll never forget this. Do you remember after the dailies when they finally did? When they, I'll never forget this as long as I live. Um, after the dailies um, of our, when we finally put our dance on film, after the dailies, everybody came up to me and other, I'm not me because I was special, but me because I was one of the group and said there was a standing ovation in dailies. There was a standing of in the dance. And then I'll never forget that on the back of a Kathleen Kennedy, the big 
Kathleen Kennedy and Bruce. Bruce was sitting, they were, you know, Bruce went on to be an enormous producer, but at that point he was just like a young little thing, but he was assistant to the producer. I think he was a first AD or something. And they were sitting backwards on a golf cart and they saw me walking and they were just like, oh my God, we saw them yesterday. I mean, the, yes. everybody went wild. I'll never forget that as long as I live. They really, they, they yes. said the whole place stood up. So it's a shame that the dance was never seen. Yes. That whole montage, because they lost their nuts over it, but it just didn't and go you know with the- you know and we also got to work with um, why we, why the hook is out. I can't even think of his name. Oh my gosh, John Williams. We got to go and recorded it, but we never got. They never yeah. matched the recording to the. I wish they would have done that and then cut it. You know, it never got matched. So which was which but, is unusual. I, it, it, I that was something that we kind of talked with Mike and Thomas and I was just the fact that that. Steven doesn't really, even all the behind the scenes features that have recently been released, nothing shows those musical numbers. And I think he's really resistant to anybody seeing it. So you guys have never seen it completed ever. We didn't okay. get to see the dailies, but I remember Vincent saying how incredible that everybody loved it. Exactly what Randy's saying. A standing ovation in dailies doesn't happen. Yeah. And that's what happened. It I gave them a standing ovation. Sorry. Wait, that I, no, I want everybody to say, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm just, uh, I want to make a holler out about Beverly, y'all. Yeah. I, Beverly oh, We're definitely going to talk about Beverly. Yeah. Did you get the picture, the other picture I sent you too? I, I didn't get that one. No, oh, I, okay. I, this is the only other one I had. I'm sorry, but this well, is everybody. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Mary, for bringing her up. Yeah, she actually, there was, I went on, I'm probably, I, I can say unequivocally, I'm the only other one. I went on to do tens of thousands, I mean, lots and lots and lots and lots of dance jobs with Beverly. And Beverly, every time she was on a, on, in a rehearsal or on a set, made sure she went around to everybody to tell them with my with me on her arm, we were in hook. You know I was in hook. We were in hook. You know I was in She was so proud of that job. And she went on and talked about it. She'd been dancing and doing professional work since yes. she was in one of, I think she said she was one of the uh, Little Rascal Gang. Yes, so, she was one of the, no, no, no. She was one of the Meglin Kitties. Meglin Kids. That's it. She okay. Thank you for correcting. Yes. She was in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes, it. She was in the scene with Mickey Rooney. Oh, my goodness. She she was uh, so proud of being in Hook, though. She never stopped talking about it. And like I said, yeah. I did 10, I probably did 15, 20 jobs with her after Hook. She was, because I didn't have a dance agent before. Actually, thank Vince for my dance agent because he called uh, one of the big dance, Vin, uh, Julie, and said, you should help sign her. So that was, and then I got to work with Beverly so much. And she was delightful. She's mm. really sweet. And she liked to go square dancing. So I, I met her and her partner square dancing. Did you, Mary? Oh, I love <laughs> that that happened. She was just the best. Mm. Doing the splits up until they up until she died. I mean, she would wake oh, wow. up every morning. Yeah, she could do the splits up until I don't know when, but probably right day before she died because she'd wake up every morning. She told me and do a bar. Wow. I would rather wake up and go to the bar, but she would like literally do a ballet bar. <laughs> I don't really drink, but it just I had to say it. It was a good. <laughs> we gotcha. <laughs> it was a good line. Mm -hmm. oh. She's amazing. I'm glad you. Um, she's not forgotten. It's funny. It's funny because day before yesterday, um, with this on my mind, you know how Facebook brings up memories, and it, mm -hmm. I thought I sent you the picture. It was me and Beverly on a on a at a rehearsal. Oh. I didn't know. I didn't we get that one. Selfie, we took a selfie together, and I thought it was so strange Aww. that it came up two days ago in my memories. She you she's know. with us tonight. I have a she feeling is. that she must is. be a oh, yeah. yeah. It's killing her a second time not to be able to talk about it. <laughs> well, uh, my other question was like because I, I got to speak to the mermaids and, and it was interesting because they were like the they were like we were the only women on set during our scenes and technically you guys are the only women on set <laughs> and the other side of Neverland so and and, and also I, I, can, I, can I also point out that we have diversity because Mary you're a part of this I don't think that's something that we got to see a lot anyways back in the 90s. I personally don't think so. So what was that dynamic like? 
how did you, what did you feel about it? Anything different or? <laughs> we were women walking around with our tits out too. I, you know, it, it got to the point where nobody would talk and like, talk, talk to me here. Don't, don't talk to me down. And then it was around the time when they had those little uh, things that made sounds like it, it was, it was about the size of a, of a hockey puck, I guess. And it made about six different sounds. So I had two of them, one that made different blow up sounds and another one that cursed. And so <laughs> if someone was getting too close, I would just push one of those buttons and things would start talking. Uh, so is the, the pirate, the guys in pirate town did get a little bit too close. Sometimes they wanted to smell the rose of my tattoo and um, yeah. But I liked it. it I like all those. I, I I was the only black lady in Pirate Town, and um, I represented. Yes, <laughs> you did really well. Yeah, really. We well. all represent. We all represent. Again, I'm still so Pirate sad Town that we didn't have more of you all in the in the actual <laughs> film. I I I had been told um, with. The just finding out more information about the film. Thomas said there were some deleted scenes, like Jack eating ice cream at breakfast. Um, he gets his costume. Apparently, one of the ladies faints before the baseball game. Um, do you guys remember shooting any of these sequences? Here's some footage that we did find. Oh, look at that! I haven't seen that. Uh, Very. Yeah, that kind of surprised me. But I remember. Here's the that. ice cream scene. Right. But did, did, oh, did yeah. you remember mm -hmm. any of these other deleted scenes that didn't make the film that you were like, besides the low below sequence, but was there anything else that comes to mind that you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even, this didn't even make it in. I never no, saw but I remember the footage being, from the baseball yeah. game. So yeah, the baseball game was, you know, we were, I was really happy to be able to sit next to Dustin and uh, but I was, you know, it was kind of scary for me. It was my first role and, you know, it was it, it was scary to me because what would happen is Stephen would tell us what we were going to do and then right before we would do it, Dustin would give me something else. And I didn't know how to really, I, I didn't do what Dustin did, but I think it's on me because had I really realized that he was the producer on, on the piece or had I gone to, to um, Spielberg and said, hey, I'm feeling uncomfortable. I don't know what to do here, but I didn't do that. So I can say that that was really on me and that was just naivety on my part. Vince was gone. I couldn't go up to him and say, hey, you know, I was on my own. And so that was in uncomfortable for me because it happened every single time. And he was wanting to give me lines. I didn't know you made more money if you had more words. I, I mean, I just was totally nice. I was in the theater. I worked with a playwright for 10 years. You know, I was doing commercials. I, I was not, I had done Pump Boys and Dinettes. You know, I just, I hadn't done. Well, the know. contract we were on, we were, it didn't matter what we said. It wouldn't we, matter. We got the yeah, same exactly. Yeah, I wish I had been other... sitting next to hmm? I would have tatted as, I said, I wish it had been me. I actually remember being so, it was one of, it was one of my first jobs too, Kim. It was, it wasn't my SAG card job, but it was probably the second big job I had ever. Oh, yeah, wasn't it, and, and I just was so crushed because I wasn't in the baseball thing and I wasn't in the cart. And I remember because I sat behind Steven a lot to watch the filmmaking process because I wanted to learn as much as possible by being on set. But I'll never forget he was big and he, he saw me being really upset. I mean, not like, I mean, not like a tantrum, just that I was sad. And he goes, I have something in mind for you. So just be quiet. Just don't worry. And I thought that was so sweet. It didn't matter in the long run. Everything was cut out. But but uh, I remember being crushed. I was so crushed. Now I don't care because I know, now I know the check clears whether you see me or not. So 
Yes, indeed. Welcome That's to it. Jaded. Yeah. No, I, I actually it wasn't my SAG card, but it was it just on a film, on a major film. Yeah. And it's a great when picture. I, self, I always look at self. And uh, that's what I would have done different had I had the chance again. Uh, yeah. And I say that for, you know, new performers. Uh, go up to the director. If you're uncomfortable, say something, you know. Um, I think or, that's or if, if, if it was an improv, if it, it sounds like Dustin was improv playing you. <laughs> and unlike theater, you can always improv play yeah. because the word is cut. It's not yeah. printed until, so if you had just been more comfortable with improv play, you wouldn't have yeah. to go up to anybody because guess what? If Steven didn't like it, he would have come up and said, yeah, no, no. And then you could have gone, yeah, I, I did. Yeah. I did. But do you remember when I did, then it was like, at one point, there was something that he did and I laughed and that was, and he got so angry at it. Who did? Dustin, he stood up. Oh, and he got well, angry. Dustin. So you see, it's like, you, you, you don't, you, Anyway, it, it was all good. It was all good. It was, you know, I just didn't know any better. That's all I can say. I didn't know yeah. any better. Well, hello, honey. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> Somebody oh, wanted to join. <laughs> My friend. Yes. Well, we, <laughs> well, we have another guest. <laughs> well, we were, we have another guest who we'd like to join, the choreographer yeah. himself. We've been talking all about him, so let's welcome Vincent. Hi there. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi ladies. Hello. Hi, ladies. So nice. Howdy, howdy. Minus Beverly. Minus our Beverly. You right. know. But, uh, so I wanted to say a couple things. Uh, first, I don't really remember... Um, I don't really remember about the audition. I don't remember if I had an audition or not. Uh, I just know that, Brandy, I remember that Joey called me about you and Kim I knew. And Mary, I think I saw a photo of you as well as Beverly. And then I think I called a few ladies together and we played a little bit. And then I selected the four of you out of that. That's kind of my memory of the whole situation, you know. And yeah, Beverly, you know, sweet Beverly. I, I went, Beverly, I did several things with Beverly after, including um, one of the things that she said was one of the most exciting moments in her life. I put her in a piece with Michael Jackson that I had done for the MTV 10th anniversary uh, piece was called, Will You Be There? And she was in one of the groups and right in the front. And she came up and said, this, I'll never forget this, Vincent. I'll never forget this. Um, it was incredible. But I've been listening to what you you all are saying, and I just wanted to say a couple things. First of all, I have a book, Randy. I have a book. Oh, I said I, I would I promised I wouldn't swear and I almost burst it no, out with a bad I'm word. Going, We're putting you on the big screen now. Go ahead, show us. I'm <laughs> gonna very quickly, very quickly read you a few of the names of the people that showed up. Um, okay, so here we have Demi Moore. Um, we have, uh, let me see, who else is here? Kate Capshaw, Billy Crystal, Penny Marshall, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Bruce Willis, Twiggy, Warren Beatty, Holly Hunter, Robert De Niro, Blythe Danner, Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman, and on and on and on. But the funny one is, and everybody had to sign as they came in, but the funny one is somebody signed for Prince, the, the singer Prince, and after it, it says he refused to sign the book, but he looked nice in his bright yellow outfit. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but Stephen had sent this to, I guess, some of us who worked on it. And it was really beautiful. He wrote, dear lost boys, dear lost boys and girls, what great times, what great games we played. Thanks to you all for adventuring in Neverland for what must have seemed forever. Bangarang. Love Steven Spielberg. So that's one of my wonderful, wonderful souvenirs of our incredible experience on Hook. Yeah. And I also wanted to say, you know, we shot this on the same stage where they shot all of those Esther Williams musicals. It was the only place where they could put in all that water in a boat. And uh, I was so excited about that because I loved those Esther Will Williams musicals where she would just dive in and all those girls following her in. That was yeah. so much fun. So much fun. Um, 
And, and wasn't so, yeah. that where Wizard of Oz was also shot too? I had heard or read about that. I'm not sure. This had a big, huge sunken, uh, a big, huge sunken area, which was they were able to fill up with water. I don't know where they would have mm -hmm. used it in the Wizard of Oz, but uh, you know, but it was an incredible set. Of course, everything. Oh my was. god! I, I yeah. Mean, everything involved in this show from yeah from you mentioned already um anthony powell the costumes were absolutely sensational and the makeup and what was so exciting is you know most of the time dancers are not treated that way they're kind of put through and you sit there and they put a little makeup and some powder on you and push you out there to do something. <laughs> and they really kept they really cared about everybody. They really cared about the ladies, especially, and made them look so glamorous and so gorgeous. And I'm just, you know, it, it's interesting what you said about diversity. I've always been someone who's fought that, against that. And I just think that the four ladies that we had were so incredibly, not only talented, but diverse. I mean, look at the four, so different. And I wanted that because... I wanted each one of them to stand out and to have their own look and their own moment. You know, this was very, very important to me. But the sad part was, um, yeah, you know, I went to those dailies and I saw it and everybody was screaming and they loved it and all of that. And then I know part of it was because uh, they cut the number because Stephen said that, um, as Kim said, I think, that it took too long to get Peter from where he landed to the ship. But I don't know. It was so incredible. I wish he would have saved it. I mean, especially it was those days of music videos. He could have done a music video just of that sequence. Oh, my gosh. That would have yeah, been amazing. Yeah. because they. I mean, yeah. think about it. We were in. Uh, I have them. I didn't, can't find it. Life is troublesome now. I can't find. But I kept them. We were in national magazines. Yeah. They used the four of us to promote the film. We were in Us. And there was a movie magazine that was huge, a big, huge, glossy movie magazine. So we were in national big publications yeah. to advertise this film. I was so surprised that they didn't, like you say, snatch that and somehow yeah. use it into something or other. But, you know, I really sat, like I said, I, I got as close as I could to Stephen and watched because it was, I wanted to soak up everything. And if you really watch what he did, he had four different movies in the can. Oh, okay. He could have made at least at least four different movies. And I think well, it was more about him choosing to focus on the Lost Boys. Yeah. Well, after because the sequence continued after we left the ladies, we went into a bar and it was a so it was a, it was the bar for all the pirates. And it was fantastic. I had a maid, Bobby Bannis, these incredible historical dancer choreographer people came on to do this job with us and mm. there was a whole song and dance they did and one of them had a peg leg and you know they did a whole dance in the bar that was fantastic and it, it, it's just a shame that it doesn't yeah. exist anywhere i also heard um and i don't know if this is true but i also heard that stephen showed it to some people and in in consequence i mean in in context of the whole film and that people were disappointed with Neverland because they thought that the piece was so exciting, kind of like Dorothy landing in Oz and everything changes. And they thought that all of a sudden this musical number that led us into Neverland was going to make the movie a musical. And people got disappointed that it didn't turn into a musical. So that was one of the things that came back to me as well. So, but it's nice to know that everybody was so enthusiastic about it and excited about it. And I just wish, and who knows, maybe he has it somewhere, but he has I, it. I just thought, gosh, in these days of music videos, why didn't he pull it? And the song was there, Leslie Brickus and John Williams and I worked and there was a whole pirate rap that we played with that the guys did in the bar. And it was crazy. It was, it was a wonderful, wonderful section. So. But, um, and that and that can all be listened to. You can hear the song itself, "Low Be Low," on the on the Hook album. I have it right here. Um, again, the link is in the show notes below. And we're going to talk to Mike a little bit uh, later about that. Let's show. Let's actually play a clip with some behind the scenes photos um, of the ladies of hearing you guys in this number. So here we go. Right. Low Be Low. Got to be hooks. Oh, you should know. Symbol of fortune and fame. Keep the fame. I'll take the fortune. Shine. That's not all, he's a son. 
Jimmy is our claim to fame. Even a few hundred more I could mention. Swordsmen, poet debaucher, harpies. Sailing and torture. Hawkers, beautiful lookers. That's what he calls us. Jimmy created our name. Oh, I haven't oh. seen some of those pictures. Huh. <laughs> so good. That's, that That's all Thomas. He finds things. He's been, he's, he's been running his fan site for years now. And, and that's how we came to meet pictures. one another. Wow. We'll make it happen. Thomas okay. is watching. So Thomas. Hi, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> They're wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. And, 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 and John was so excited about creating this piece, especially when we had this little... Um, a section that they never recorded this little uh, maybe we did I'm not I can't remember but this little rap pirate rap and John was so excited about this moment and he was like oh my gosh I'm so I never did anything like this and he was like a little kid you know and having the opportunity to work with him and Leslie Brickus and uh, who recently passed away I think um, it was it was a phenomenal a phenomenal phenomenal project and uh, we all had a great time and we were all treated like royalty and they took great care of everybody. And um, I got to do a lot of other sections in the movie, playing, playing with Robin and the boys at different times and a whole skateboard sequence that happened and a little bit with Julia. Nice. Yeah, so it was, it was really fun for me. You know, he would call me and say, hey, can you come on down today? Let's play around with some stuff. And, and I would do that and pop in and pop out. And we had a great time, really great time, yeah. Yeah, How many and people Bob say that they they get to work that they got to work with one of the most musical genius, John Williams, go in a studio. I mean, in our generation, he's got to be. I mean, to me, that'll go down as one of the most unbelievable days, and it spurred me on. I was telling Mike this once that, you know, he said, "Okay, take it from measure, da da da," and I was panicked because I wasn't a musician at that point, and I faked it, and I swore to I did one of those God. Uh, those bets with God, you God, get me through this and I promise I'll learn. And I did. And now I lead a band. But I was like so scared that I was going to make it of myself in front of John Williams. because. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob had been interviewed. Bob Hoskins had been interviewed about the particular number. So um, he, he said, this is his quote, I got cut out and I was blanked off. I worked for days on that dance, but Steven said they didn't have time for it. So he was not happy either. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He worked very hard. I mean, we all did. We all did because it was it, it, it was like could have been one continuous uh, uh, shot. You know, it just followed Robin, uh, fo Robin following the hook all the way through and having these amazing characters pop out here and pop out there. and. It was sensational. So I'm glad Bob said that because he was yes. a Yes. Thank you he for spilling the tea, Tammy. Yes. Spilling the tea. <laughs> Again, Tom, Thomas found that one. That was from a 1992 interview, a year after it came uh, out. There's a lot of behind the scenes interesting stories that you can now find online which is quite interesting um it sounded like there was a lot of um a lot of tension behind the sets. Did you did you guys feel that or see any of that? I never did. I never felt any tension. Mm -mm. No. Everything what, that what we did. Like you know, I'll tell you, when there, when dance and music is involved, tension seems to fall up away. You know, tension seems to oh, drop yeah. off of everybody's shoulders because everybody just gets so excited about hearing music and watching people move. And, you know, it, it changes the whole atmosphere. And uh, it just makes everybody happy. So... Maybe when we were working, we didn't sense that tension so much because we brought a lot of joy to that set, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you think about Rob? And I heard that sometimes, you know, when, you know, there's sometimes a lot of downtime because they're setting up shots and things like that. And he would kind of entertain the crew. There's some video footage of it online. But what were your thoughts on Robin? Well, I've worked with Robin a lot. I was so fortunate. I used to choreograph the opening of, um, what was it called? Comic Relief, uh, which was Billy Crystal, Whoopi Goldberg and Robin. And they would open up the event. It was a big charity event. And um, I choreographed that three years in a row. So I knew Robin a little bit. 
and I got to work with Robin and, and Kim, actually. Um, I directed a project about Dr. Seuss. It was a d crazy documentary that on the Turner Network about Dr. Seuss. And I called Robin and asked him if he would come in and play a Seussian father reading Cat in a Hat. So, um, you know, and I did The Birdcage with Robin. So, you know, the movie, The Birdcage. So I worked yeah. with Robin a lot in my career. I was so fortunate. He was a terrific, terrific man. And yes, he was always on. And he was, yes. anytime there was a down moment, he kept everybody in high spirits and laughter because he never stopped. He just never stopped. And, but it was always sweet. You know, you never felt like, uh, would that guy shut up? It was always, you just loved him. He, he, he just had such a warmth about him yes. and his, yes. You know, his contributions were yeah, he was a great man. He treated everybody on the set the same, whether you're behind the scenes, whether you were in it, whether you were a star or you were not. And that was that was a gift he had. And I just want to say something uh, just for my beautiful Vincent. Icons and Instincts is his book out and it is a must read. And I hope you all Ooh. go and get it. I don't know if you know about this book, Tammy. You probably no. Do. I'm oh. going to read it now. <laughs> and it's spectacular. Oh, good. And um, yeah. And so uh, that's in it from the birdcage. And he talks about all these people he's worked with. And it's 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 moving and it's meaningful. So I just wanted to put a little plug there. For oh. my <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It is, oh, you know, thank it's you. Important. It's important. That's sweet. And my and mother I, loves the birdcage more than life itself. Oh, yeah. That's so but who doesn't? I mean, like, I could stop on that movie at any, but my mother's like, shh, shh, shh. she just, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too, though. Yeah. And I know, I know half the guys in there, so I'm always like, oh, look at Tony. Look at him. <laughs> Mary, did you want to say something? Your mic's muted. I think Come you, back. you know, I, I there was, you go. I wanted to go back to the diversity again when you were talking about diversity, because one of the things that I will say about Stephen is that um, there was diversity behind the scenes, and and I really appreciated that because in Hollywood there isn't always diversity behind the scenes, even when I could say I did coming to America. I will definitely say there was more diversity behind the scenes at Hook. Wow. Than that way. Wow. And wow. And, and um, that, that's okay. And so anyway, but I, I, I loved Robin. Robin was a, a genius. He was brilliant. He was funny. Um, I mentioned a, a show that I had been into Robin and then he started riffing on one of the songs in the show. Uh, I started riffing on your feet's too big. I'm not going to say what he said. Okay. <laughs> but I love him. I love him very much. Yeah. Great man. Great yeah. man. And so talented. Too. Yeah. God. Vincent, just going back to John Williams, you know, Working with him on the development of the choreography, what, what did you feel was influenced? Was it the music came first and was influenced by the, you know, by, were they influenced by each other or did you work in a collaborative way to tell him what you were looking for and he would kind of make something along those lines just for the songs that you choreographed? Yes, well, um, I, I mean, the only song that I choreographed was this. The other were little sections, action sections that happened throughout. But, um, Yes, the way we would work is we had a diagram of the set and I would kind of plot out what I thought I would do. And, you know, because there were so many incredible elements that you don't see, you know, on on this walk that they took from the boat to the I mean, from the from Robin Landing to the, the ship. And um, so we would have this little sketch pad and I would say, oh, let's blah, 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 something happened here. And then I'm going to do something over here with some ladies and then we'll move along and let's do this for a while. And then here we go. This do some little moment here with some kids and then over here. And then let's go into the 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 um, the bar, the tavern, the soldier, the, the sailor's tavern and do a piece in there. So that's how we kind of worked. We shaped it physically first. And then he started to lay down all the, the music for me. I played by myself for a little while with my assistant, 
Smith Wordies. And then uh, after that, we got the ladies in, we brought that in and, and John fine tuned everything. And that's where we were. Yeah. It was an amazing collaboration and it was just so much fun with him. He was, he's such a sweet man. Again, I, I, I was just, I was just blown away at how kind everybody was to, to me and I think to the ladies as well. But um, so, you know, those jobs are, are few and far between, especially when they're massive and they go on for months and months and months. And, you know, people's mm -hmm. nerves get a little afraid and, you know, but what it, I never saw that. I never saw that. I only saw happy people doing a happy project. So, you know, that was a great thing for me. I'm I'm happy to hear that. And the reason it, the reason I'd asked about the friction friction was I feel like the publicity team must have really pushed the drama, the drama, it sounds like, behind the scenes. It doesn't sound like there really was any, any truly. Well, I wish the they would have pushed how... It was the summer that Julia broke up with Kiefer. And that got all yeah. kinds of play all over the... Da -na 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 -na. What is it? Entertainment? <laughs> I can't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But whatever. I mean, so I think that got a lot of play. It just got, you know, whatever. And yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm, gl I'm glad to hear yeah. it was a pleasant we experience treated, for you. We were treated like gold. I mean, I was, in fact, I will say the only bad thing is that it happened at the very beginning of my career. And I went on to think, well, this is going to be great. I can't wait to work more. <laughs> 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 what Vince said. Can you come camera ready? You know, like, I mean, you know, put your own make, you know what I mean? Slide out of the car. We don't really care what you look like, you know. Um, <laughs> well, so, let me, yeah, let I me bring, go, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't no, mean no, to cut a, you that's off. That's enough. It's enough. <laughs> well, I want to bring Mike back in too. Mike has been sure. waiting and Mike, we already had on, on the show just to talk about the album and, and welcome back again. Hello. Um, you sent over some clips. Uh, you're muted too, by the way. <laughs> Just I am now you. There you go. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> How great. are First you? Of all, so I'm great. It's so awesome to see all of you together and to just have had this. You get it, it's deserved moment in the spotlight after so many years. It's just, just great. It's nice. And I have to say that I don't know if you have the piece of paper because you know it all started with a zero point of not having any information. We had the recording, and I don't know if you slipped the slip of paper, Tammy, of the scoring log, which just has everybody's first name on it. Randy's yes. name misspelled. Yep, I'm going to go I'm, on. I'm so actually, I had to let, like start talking. Yeah, can we, oh, I'm going to jump in. I want to just play the clip, and then we'll talk about it. And it has the image okay. that you sent over. So, so oh, this okay, is, great, these great, are great. just little clips of all the four ladies doing their little bit for the low are, below song. So here we go. These are. We're still take sixty five, Beverly. Still take sixty five, Beverly. Measure one hundred and ten. Oh. That's what he calls us. Take sixty six. Am I getting Randy. some in? What am I getting before I do this? Just, just do it wild, so just okay. Do it that okay. Yeah, I do. Anytime you want to oh, okay. So you persuaded him. This is Randy Measure uh, 97. Keep the fame. I'll take the fortune. <laughs> take 67. Mary. Anytime. Oh, so I'm doing it on. We're not doing this music. Just oh. Just wild. One, two. That's not all he's a son of. Do it again. That's not all he's a son of. Take 68, Kim. Him and a few hundred more I could mention. <laughs> oh, him and a few hundred more I could mention. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, great to have that. Wow. And Mike, Mike how, it was a, it must have been a lot of fun to play with these clips, right? You're you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the the search for it was just a big under there was no record of it. They literally had to dig through the salt mines to find everything and send it in. And we had that one scoring log with everybody's first name on it. And nothing else was on file. So wow. it was just great to sort of one by one find everybody with some help from Thomas um, and uh, reach out and get and everybody just came together to make it happen. And that's what's great. It's like we can't get the scene. We can't put it back in the movie. We can't even show it as a music video. But we can finally at least 
have this, you know, great, very elaborate sequence, um, you know, have its, um, as I said, the, the spotlight that it deserves. And, um, you know, we had a finished mix of the whole thing, but I also, all those individual component parts of it. And I just love to, you know, it's time travel to listen to John Williams at a session a third of a century ago. It just it kind oh of just blows your mind when you get it and it's in perfect quality and, you know, it's like, and I, and I kind of, you know, I do that all the time. I get to hear all this stuff, so. <laughs> Way to make me feel I need a walker. Oh my I, god. Oh well, I know. No, I I sometimes I don't, know. I don't know how it's possible that it's been 33 years when all of us have only aged five years. I mean, I don't get it. Yeah. So. I remember being there in the booth. I remember when I when you sent over the takes, I just went right back and I was right there. And it was very exciting. John Williams, right? It's like Steven Spielberg. <laughs> You know, everybody that worked on the film was like, oh. <laughs> we were very fortunate. It was, uh, you know, I felt very, very fortunate. Thank you. Vincent. And you know what? I do want to say that um, I've worked with a lot of, been very lucky, have had a, because of Vincent, actually, like I said, he called Julie and I had a dance agent after that. But I have to say being in the studio with John Williams was the scariest thing. But he, there's been a couple of people that I work with that are so pure of heart and so wonderful that you take a chance to put on that wacky accent. You take, because what you didn't hear was like, you know, like I did a really big laugh and I was like, uh oh, he goes more. I mean like, but they're not, there's not a lot of them. And I've been doing this now 33, thank you. However many, a quarter of a century, thanks for that. Or whatever Third. you said, Third. a third of a century, whatever. <laughs> A lot of a century. I've been doing it a lot of a century. Ugh. And um, that is unbelievably rare where someone wants you to do so well that they step their ego out of the way and just pour all this into you. And you automatically feel so relaxed and so loved on in a weird, that they know that that's going to get the best out of you. And he is that. That's what he does. Yeah. Well, I also have to say that um, despite the passage of the years, I could tell by meeting all of you just how great the casting was because the personalities are are just there. It's like it was absolutely the right people. And I want to also give a shout out. Vincent, you mentioned uh, Bob Bannis. One, among the other pirates is Lonnie Burr, one yeah. of the original Mouseketeers, wow. and Greg Smith. Is that the, um, were the four, right? It's the four guys. Right. Who's and we have a clip of yes, and we have a clip of uh, Vincent. Uh, here we oh. go. Let's play that. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, listen, I want to look no, no listen, homie. You got an eye patch. Show me. Fresh. What a catch I am. Oh, Heads are gonna roll. Gonna eat them up whole. Now you'll chill them to the bottom of the soul. Yo ho ho. Me. <laughs> so how about a hook tattoo? Word up. Knock me in my mouth with a hammer. Oh my gosh. Quickly, I just want to show one thing because I have a wonderful other memory. This wonderful t shirt of Hook. Oh, wow. Well. With the Hook. Yes. Oh, nice. So good. Oh, nice, nice, nice. I kept it all these years, you know. What? What else do you all have? Do you have any other props, costumes, anything you got to keep? Any memorabilia? Well, I sent you over the music. Yep, I have Is that. It, I wanted yeah. to end with that. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, Dustin gave us, do you remember Dustin gave us all the fishing jacket with the hook? Oh, there oh. we are. That's the wrap party with my natural <laughs> color hair. Um, yeah, he got us all, hook, they said hook on them. And about, I held on to that for oh, at least 25 yes years and i gave it to a gentleman who meant a lot to me an older man because he always wore those kind of and i was told he died not he died a while ago and he wore it every single day so it, oh. it was just in my closet but he loved it so much you ever give oh. something away that you think that's the right that was the right thing to do even though it bothered me of weird because i wanted the memorabilia but i never thought after i saw him ever and other people who knew him said he wore it every day but it was a cool gift, just was impractical because I don't wear fishing vests. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked the t-shirt, Vince. 
And I have a hat, a hook hat. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that is nice. Ooh. <laughs> well, Brandy, why, why don't you tell us the story about this picture? Well, I just knew what John, I, I brought, I asked him at the end of our session to sign it. And uh, he did. And then um, I, at the rap party, I went up to Stephen and I started to tell Stephen who I was because, you know, like there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people on this ad. Clearly I looked different out of costume. I never assumed someone like Steven Spielberg. And he said, he just looked at me and said, shut up, Randy. I know who you are. <laughs> he like did something. And then I don't know if you could see what he wrote, but he went, Randy, thanks for hanging on the lamppost, Steven Spielberg. And I often, I often say that if I had to save two things, I might save the cat but I would definitely save that framed piece of memorabilia because I love it. Very I nice. love that story. Wow. So, what, 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 would, what would each of you say is the one word that you think kind of sums up your personal experience of working on Hook? And, and, we'll, and we'll start with you, Randy, if that's okay. Um, Life-changing. Hmm. Mary, what about you? What, what what would be your word? And you'll have to unmute yourself. <laughs> How about transcending? Mm. Trans I, who knew that this was going to have a life of its own, really? I mean, you know, 33.3 years later, <laughs> I, I had no idea people would have so much love for this piece. Mm. Stop it. Yeah. Vincent, I, what about you? Well, so many things, but, you know, I think immersion, perhaps, because I felt that when we, you know, rehearsal is one thing, but when you dress, when you, when you get the cast dressed and you put them in the set and you walk onto that set, I just never would forget that set. It was phenomenal. You felt like you were four years old, you know, it was just like magic, like you were in a Christmas some kind of crazy Christmas world. So I guess immersion, because I just felt so a part of everything in that space and, and everybody looked so perfect everywhere you looked. It was like so complete from the top to the bottom. Nothing was overlooked. Everything was perfection. Yes. And Kim, what about you? Grateful. Just grateful. Yeah quite the experience you know you get to you get to be part of so many childhoods for so many kids it's i love that i could find hook during the holiday season because i consider it a christmas movie and it's on netflix so i yes. was really enjoying watching it during that time and i've introduced it to other you know friends who have never seen it and younger ones and everybody seems to have a, a wonderful affinity for it and i'm so glad you guys could be on the show because I don't think you get the opportunity to hear, and I wish you could hear from so many of us, but I'd like to speak for almost all the 90s babies that we really love this film and it really did shape our childhoods. I, I'm very sad that Spielberg doesn't seem to think that way because I really would love to see all of the work that you guys, you have all created. You know what I mean? Everything you did was wonderful and I do hope we get something in the near future. So I'm just knocking on wood for that. <laughs> And I'm not going to let that go either. And you know, people <laughs> well, still, people thanks, Mike. It's own. out there. It's out there. It, it, I mean, you said earlier, does it exist? Of course it exists. Spielberg has that in his vaults. You know, he's just not proud of I mean, he should be, but you know, whatever. He, it, it, I'm just going to say it exists. I want to monetize it. <laughs> I want to <us> sell <laughs> <laughs> I want us. I want us to go to fan conventions and sign shit. <laughs> that would be fun. Well, now you have Mike has the album out that he had worked on. So again, it, the link is in the show notes below. You should absolutely get it so you can hear the entire song and these lovely ladies and Vincent on the track. It's it's wonderful to finally hear. I know Thomas. It's like his favorite thing to talk about, and I didn't know really anything about it. So. When it came out, I that was like the first thing I had to listen to. Um, it's one of but, those and, things that you hear about, and then you, and then suddenly you finally have it. You almost can't believe that you finally have it, and it exists. 
I'm, I was just shocked because, like, again, four years ago, we were talking to Caroline about she said she had a song in the movie. I was like, what? And she has that when you're alone. And and I, I do feel like it would be great if he could reconsider Spielberg, could reconsider just. And Mr. Williams is still out there. He's performing concerts. He's coming by two months to my area. And I'm like, and he still plays. Uh, the, the theme, the flight to Neverland, and all of the shows. So I, I really do think that there is something there, and I and I hope you all get to come together for a, a real person in re reunion. That would be that would be. Amazing. Would, would you like to learn? Would you do the choreography all over again? I'm up for it. Come on, Vince. <laughs> Yes, you remember that, right? Am I right? Was I right? Did you hear me say that? When you I were didn't there? remember. I didn't remember until you said it. Okay. <laughs> I remember it was a brain tease. I was like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well now, um, I know this was about you guys and not uh, so much about the pirate guys, but I mean, Randy's often talking. Every time we talk about it, you talk about the peg leg pirate dance. And, yeah, because they with the legs strapped up. back. Yeah. Because because now you could just CG that leg out, right? But uh, man, that was that must have been hard to do. Uh, yeah. I, who were Vince? Who were the four again? Did you were there four or were there three? Because I didn't get I to see it taped. I thought it was four, but maybe it was only three of it. There were at least four. Uh, I know Bobby Bannis, uh, Greg Smith. Um, who else did you mention, Mike? Uh, Lonnie Burr. Lonnie Burr, but I know there were a couple other. I thought there were sure four men, but I can't yeah. remember. It was either four or five actually was, yeah. who were in there. Not that they all had things to do and say, but you know, as far as the group in the bar, yeah, right. There was a tavern thing, and I think maybe like a dentist thing, dentist moment, pulling teeth God, or I'd something like that. that. Yeah. That's right. Oh my gosh, that's right. I forgot that. Yeah, these were all these little moments that were synced with the music. You know, going into the bar, going into the dentist office. I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> all these crazy that little sounds moments. great. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, before we fly off to Neverland, let's all look at the camera. We're all going to take a little Kodak moment um, just to smile and capture this wonderful um, reunion we've had. So on the count of three, one, two, three, smile. Awesome. And and thank you to everybody who's been in the chat. There's so many people who've been commenting along. We have Tammy Potts who said, what a career Vincent has had. Nancy says, yes, Kim, icons and instincts is amazing. <laughs> Oh, um, happy Michael book, yeah. Jackson Day says Vincent is a legend and has brought happiness to people around the world. Yes. And uh, John says, Time for Smee and Long Live the Hook. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> long Live the Hook. Great. This is I think solid. that's the perfect way to end this. Long Live the Hook. So thank you guys right. so much for coming tonight and being a part of this. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Tammy. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Tammy, great so job as always. Thank you. Okay. Have a good evening, you guys, and bang okay. a rag. <laughs> <laughs>